Okay, so here I'll introduce the project. So this is the latest version of ICON, and uh, within this project, so this is the stakeout demo project here, along with this job of corner points. But if I just look at the data that I've got imported, I've got a CSV file, which is a basic point file of some points that I'll be staking out. That'll be the first thing I'll do. I've also got a DXF file I'll work with later, some control points I've used for an intersection. And I've also got a DXF load as a background image as well. Um, I come into the jobs section here, but two two active jobs. Well, the, the active job is corner points, and the second job that I'll use later, which is which is DXF. And um, I come in here to the devices screen. You can see I've got a, I'm connected to the Icon robot. This is a Bluetooth connection to an Icon robot. So if we talk about staking with Icon, there's two different application approaches. So one approach is aligned to the sort of engineering and infrastructure approach, and that's Icon Site, and that's here, that's stake out. And uh, then one is aligned to the building construction approach or icon build, and those are here, they're layout points and layout lines. Now coming into the system um, option here, and if I come into active licenses, you can see that I've got icon site plus installed here. So if I've got site plus installed, I also see icon site beneath it here. Um, if I just have a standard icon site version, then of course this top line wouldn't be displayed. So site plus means I don't just have stake out here, I've got the layout options as well. So so there's the main difference between site and build approaches to staking out. In, in build, it is split between points and lines like this, whereas in site, it is a combined application. But other than that, some differences lie in the content of the toolbox. So if I come into stake out, for example, here's the toolbox. Just, just for an example, uh, here in the toolbox, I've got a change option. Now, that's, that's not an option you'll find in, in, um, in, in, in the layout version. I mean, for example, in the layout version, I can show you, um, for example, here we've got two tapes, and two tapes, that's exclusive to icon build. If you're wondering, I can quickly demonstrate that. That's um, that's a way of staking out points without actually using a total station. So if you, I just select two anchor points, for example, points A and B, and then select point C. And if I if I know the whereabouts of points A and B, then I can locate point C based upon the distances from A and B. So yeah, I suppose the clues in the title really. You'll need two tapes. You won't need a total station. So. Um, this is taken from the equipment list. Now, this is a, a basic overview of the different applications within Icon Build and Icon Site here. So, for example, down here you've got layout points, and you can see there there's a, there's a mention of two tape layout, which is an exclusive to Icon Build and not Icon Site. For example, here down in Stakeout here, you've got this option of defining chainage. So, there are two examples that I've shown you, and they're referenced here in this um, in the equipment list. I think it's page 15 of the equipment list, if I remember correctly. It also references the other applications as well, so sketching, as built, etc. So that's a useful reference if that's something um, you want a bit more information about. Okay, so I, I'm going to demonstrate today using the stakeout application. So I'm going to come into stakeout. Now, I'll just quickly zoom out so you can see what's going on here. So you can see here I've got four control points here, and I've also got four reference points. Now, I've already done my resection using this control file. I don't need that anymore, so I'll turn that off in the Mac View Manager. So if I come in here and just set control to off, and then back in the screen, I'm left with four points that I'll stake out. So the first point, I'll tap point A here, and there we go, point A, and press start to begin measurements. So what you can see here is the measured points in the screen. You can see it's displayed in yellow. And the line and offset values are shown, and they're relative to the total station. So, so there's, um, you can see there I've got a 2.1 meters and 0.7. They're relative to in and out values relative to the orientation of the total station. So, a relevant value here also is this value here. You can see that's the straight line distance to the point. So at the moment that's 2.2 meters. That's represented by this blue line. Now, as I move closer to the point, if you look, once that value, that 2.2 meters, goes below two. I'll switch automatically to this 2.5 feet bullseye view. Okay, so those line and offset values that I spoke about are now displayed in this pole station perspective mode. You can see on the right hand side here. And and as I move closer to the point still, this next circle that represents 50 centimeters. So you can see now I'm just, just going to move a bit closer to the point. And as I just reach 50 centimeters, like so you can see now the scale resets again. And this blue, the blue circle you can see in the center, that's the tolerance, that's the tolerance itself. So again, if I move closer again, you see that once I'm within that circle, point, the point color has now changed to green rather than yellow, and that point can be stored, so that's within tolerance. Now, if I just press store, and I can see that point stored in green. Okay, 
So now just to compare, just so you know how the tolerances are working, I'll just come back out, come into units and go to tolerances. This is where I define the tolerance. So you see now the tolerance is set to the low, which for TPS stakeout is 100 mil. I'll quickly switch now to mid just for a comparison. So the TPS stakeout tolerance is now 20 mil. And I'll stake a point. Back into stakeout. I'll select point B. So it's the same basis I've got. You can see here the distance to the point is now 2.5 meters. As I move closer to the point, it switches automatically. I'll just uh, start measurement. Now that you can see I'm 1.7 meters away from the point, so I'm automatically into this bullseye mode. As I come closer into the 50 centimeter circle, the scale is going to reset. But now you can see that the tolerance circle is a lot smaller because I've changed my tolerances. So take a little bit more work to get to the point. But there you go. You can see so the point's yellow as I come closer. The point will just become green to show it's within tolerance. And I'll store that point. Okay. I'll, I'll switch back the tolerance now. I'll switch it back to um, to the low level, to the 100 mil, just for uh, speed of demonstration, really. Okay. So back into stake. And now what I want to show you is a different way of selecting the point. So now instead of tapping the point in the screen, I'll use the point ID search. So if I tap ID here, this is a way of searching for a point instead of actually tapping it in the screen. There's a number of different ways of searching for points. I can search by point ID or by code or even by elevation. I will search by point ID. And I'll come in here and I just want point C. So if I just tap point C and press accept, you can see point C is automatically selected in the screen. So that's a nice easy way of selecting the next point. Now, I'll start measurements now. And that one difference between point C, you'll notice, if I come through the screens here, now this third screen, all these blue, these blue icons here mean it's referring always to the reference points, the point to be staked. And this point's slightly different. Now this point has a height of zero. I've deliberately imported a height of zero. So I want to show you what happens when you stake out a point that actually has a height of zero. So as I move closer to the point, same basis. I'll just get close to the point now. So I'm already within tolerance. Now, because I've got this height of zero, in the, in the second screen here, you'll see that the cut fill value, or the height offset between the reference point and the measured point, it's over a meter there. But the, the point here is still shown as green. But if I press store now, it's actually stored in red. Now um, I'll quickly come back to the um, to my presentation. This is a screenshot that's taken from the user manual, and you can see that the, the different point labels that are shown in the screen are shown here. So basically, if you see a tick in on the point, that means it's on a 2D basis that it's within tolerance. The color is always referring to the height, the height difference. So you can see there, that, that point there was within tolerance, but it was out for height. So that, when you see that red point like that, it's something, I guess it's, if, you're, if you're worried about 2D tolerance, then you're fine. Um, but yeah, I suppose it's a different, slightly different approach. I'll come back to icon now. Come in and stake out this point D. Now quickly show you another another approach here. So you can see if I'm um, I'm here, I'm 2.4 meters away again. Now I've got this two, 2D view that I can use if I want, but I can also come in and use arrow view. So if I tap arrow view now, this is a different approach again. It's like you're kind of immersed within the um, within the state out rather than being on a, on, a, on a plan basis. So you can see the same line and offset values here, 2.4 and 0.5. They're the same that are displayed here as well. And um, it'll work on the same basis. So I've got 2.4 meters here. Once I come below 2 meters, it will see the 2.5 D bulls down. Now this is toggleable, so I can just come back to this other view if I want to. See the same values here, 2.4 and 0.5. Come back into arrow. Again, same basis. So I'll come and stake out this final point in the screen. You can see now that once I came below 2 meters, it automatically switched to this. What I'll do in this case, actually, is I'll store it just outside just to let you know how it works if you're storing outside of tolerance for whatever reason. So if I press store, and I can see now the point's yellow. I'm more than 100 mil away from the point. If I press store, so you can see I've got this warning message. I can continue to stake, press continue, and then maybe go and find the point properly. Or if, if whatever reason I can't reach that point, I can accept anyway. And you can see that that point there is stored with it in yellow. So that's another point there. So it's out of tolerance for position. So on a 2D basis. Okay. So I don't know if you know or not, but all these stake points are given a code of stake out within the active job. So that means that there's a controllable layer that can be turned on and off here in the map view manager 
corner points. So if I can turn off the points that I've staked out there, if I want to reference the data that I was originally working with, I can do that and switch back. So it's kind of a useful thing to know if you want to have a look at your stake out points or not, you can turn that layer off. Okay, so you can see I've staked points at different tolerance levels with, with different guidance different distances from the uh, the reference data display to display the results as you can see. So I've also shown the arrow view along with the 2.5D bullseye point guidance. But the arrow view and the 2.5D guidance, they were newly introduced for version 1.5 and that was based on feedback from earlier versions saying that they could be a little bit more straightforward. So the feedback on these features has been, it's been universally good and it's a, it's a massive improvement. Ultimately it allows customers to stake out more points in less time. So yeah. Now I'll imagine um, I've done my basic stake out work, uh, but maybe a few days later there's some more staking to be done in the area. So I'll, I'll switch to the second job, which was a DXF of the surrounding area. It also includes some new detail in the area of work. So you can see there's plenty of detail in the DXF. There's a lot more points and lines. Um, I know that I'm only adding detail to the work that I did before, so I can turn that data on again here. So my corner points job, if I turn that to on and just the stake out to on. Now you can see on the screen here, you know, that's the work done in the previous job, but I can still see it. Okay, so, so let's imagine I've, I've been told I want to stake out these three arc points. Um, so if I, if I tap 478, for example, to stake it, you can see I've uh, configured this um, info panel. The fifth page I've configured, configured to code ref. Now you said it was, it was, it was showing up as arc points. So I mean, let's say I only want the arc points displayed and not the rest of the DX there. I come into um, the data view manager down here and use the drop down on the DX there. These are all my different layers for the DX. I can see arc point is displayed here. So if I turn the rest to off and just arc on and come back in, you can see the arc points are displayed, but then you can see the rest of the DXF not displayed. What, what's the, what that's displayed there is the background image of, this, of the same DXF. So that's read only. It's a nice reference for perspective, but I don't have my screen, you know, un, unwanted clutter in the screen if that's how I want to work. So you see these, these are the points that I want to stake out. It's these three here, 478, 479, and 480. Uh, so I'll select point 478 to stake out. If I just press start to measure. Okay, so that's my distance to the point. Okay. So what I want to do now is use the, the split screen version. I'll use multi-view. I haven't mentioned that yet. And um, there's, there's three different ways of orientating the screen. I tend to go for this one over here. Um, and so here I can have a look at the get a nice site overview. Maybe here I'd, um, on the left-hand side, sorry, I'll use the arrow view. So you can see you've got a split between sort of a two-point, a two view on the right hand side and then the arrow view, the immersed view on the left. So I'll just begin to stake that point now. So as I move closer to the point, automatically the arrow view goes into 2.5D. And that's the point stake now if I store there. So next point, I can select it in this screen if I want, or I can select it in either screen really. Um, now, for this point, I'll change the orientation reference. So if I move away, move back in, so if I select 479. Now, what I'll do here is uh, in the, uh, in, I've got an option here in the orientation config. Um, at the moment, all my orientation is based upon the station. So on the left-hand side, you can see the station and the pole and the line and offset given relative to that. If I come into orientation config, I'll switch to known points. So this is a different orientation. What I'll do here is I'll orientate to a control point. So I'll turn a control file back on and then I'll, you'll see how this works. Okay. So if I select point one, for example, maybe I want to orientate to, to control that I've already got. Select 479 to stake out. Now you can see that the line and offset values, so it's probably best off in this, in this left hand side. You can see they're clearly relevant to the station here instead. So the straight line distance to the point is the same, of course, but the, but the, the orientation is given slightly differently. Um, also, if I switch to arrow view, you'll see now that there's no station here. It's a pole and a known point orientation basis. So then if I come towards the point and stake it out, those line and offset values will be given relative to this station point. 
rather than the there we go. Okay. And I'll quickly store the final arc point as well. Okay. So I mean in terms of using um the known point. You can use existing data you've already got of Iceland, or you can measure something on the fly, as it were, as well. So, you, of course, you can use control like Iceland, or you can maybe use the corner of a building or a large tree. So, for GPS, it might be particularly useful because if you don't have a station reference anyway, then yeah, you can use a, a local reference instead. So, in terms of other options, I won't run through today. So, the GPS you can orientate to the sun, and also there's orientation to the last state point, which might be useful if you're working in an area where there's no obvious site features, so you, you can find your next point based upon what you've just done. So, yeah, that was staking out points in a number of different ways, uh, different ways to select a point, it tapping directly or using the point search functionality, um, then using the 2.5D bullseye view, the, the plan orientation or the arrow view, and also the split screen, and also using the different orientation options. So there's quite a lot of flexibility. Um, one further orientation option is shown in the toolbox, and that's the option of staking with reference to a line, that's here. So the in and out values to the point would be given relative to the orientation of a line that you define in the screen. So, but I'll move on now to talk about staking lines very quickly. So I guess you can stake out lines as well. And you can, you can import lines to and tap them to stake, or you can define lines based on points that I've already got. So I'll do that now, create a third job. I'll just quickly create a job, call it lines. And in the data, I'll activate the CSV file. Okay, so in stakeout, there's an option called connect points. So if I select connect points from here, and I'll just use B and D as an example. You see now that immediately, as soon as I've selected these two lines, the, the line is um, is defined, and you can see that I'm already staking out this line. I'll switch the multi view off at this stage and start measurement. So you can see the, the offset values of the line is displayed in the screen. It's also displayed here at the top and along with the, the line value as well. Um, now if I want to, I can show that in a larger way, like I, here's one I made earlier. And um, yeah, so, so for example, if I want to state to 40 centimeter intervals, then I can just look at the line value and look at the offset value as well. So that's a 40 centimeter example, you see. Of and within tolerance, you can see I've got my green points within tolerance, but offset's not too large. And if I press door there, you can see I, so I can stake out the line directly based upon the line and offset values that I'm looking at. I can quickly do a couple of those. And what I can also do is create lines along, create points along the line. So if I use divide line here, I can select the line individually, and then down here I can either distribute a number of lines based on a segmented basis or a distance basis. If I set the interval at 0.4 meters, you can see that, and then press accept, then points are created along the line, and then I can select the points to stake as well. So that's a different way of doing it. So for example, then I can select 0.5, and then I'm staking that point out on a on the same basis as was previously. It's like a point stake out. So there you go. There's two different ways of, of staking out lines there. Okay. So there's plenty of flexibility in terms of how you put data out in the field, and of course there's a sketching application as well. Okay, in terms of what I wanted to show you, I mean, that's the majority of it. So if I turn, if I turn the corner points job on and the, and the site DXS job on, then you can see that you get a nice overview of all the state out work that I've done in a relatively short space of time. 